All right, folks. So this is the first of a series on open educational resources, do it yourself for faculty. We had an overview video, and this is gonna dive into the why and a little bit of differentiation between OER and ZTC. So why switch to OER? You like your paid textbook, you don't wanna switch, you're already busy. And this is the pitch I often give to faculty when they ask this. Imagine starting each and every semester with every student fully equipped and ready to start learning that day. No delays, no barriers. Think about how many students you have who try to wait weeks to buy the textbook because they just don't have the funds. Or maybe they try to do your whole class without ever buying the textbook because gas has gone up so much. OERs make it possible by providing free, accessible, high quality textbooks and educational materials from the onset. Esteemed faculty, think about having the opportunity to be at the forefront of education innovation, embracing transformation, and helping your students all have the opportunity to start learning in the same place so no one starts off behind. Now, if you ask me in one word, why OER in one sentence, textbook costs should never be a barrier to education. They close achievement gaps and they lead to more equitable learning opportunities. And I'm gonna dive into the five parts, affordable and equitable, flexible and customizable for you folks, up-to-date resources with the information cycle, accessible, global participation and cross-pedagogical pollination. And lastly, this is just a personal belief of mine, humanity's right to higher education. So little deeper dive, what are the actual benefits of OER? Equitable education. So when we talk about every single student actually starting with a book in hand the first day of class, technically that's just equality. That's every single student having access to the book at the same time. Equity is when we make sure also that we have it in different forms. Some students might do best with a physical printed book and OERs, we can print them for a very low cost. Others do better with digital interfaces. A lot of our students are now digital natives and they do best with digital environments that they can pull up on their smartphone in their pocket. Second, customization. You all are the subject experts in your area. You know your students and you know this subject area and how it needs to be taught to your students. So being able to customize your material to meet the specific needs of your students is a wonderful benefit. Cost effectiveness and accessibility is a huge part of it. As someone who works in a college library, we have students come in the second day of class in a panic all the time looking for a textbook. And if it is not an OER and I pull up the cost, I watch their faces fall knowing that suddenly they have to come up with this cost in order to purchase a textbook. Having cost-effective accessible textbooks, I can give them a link right there on the spot and say, here's some printing options. You can go print this PDF right here. It is incredible how much more excited students are to learn when they have the resources in hand. And lastly, this does lead to a global impact. We are leading to a bigger and brighter world, a bigger and brighter future. And it's been a really lovely thing to witness. And when we talk about cross-pedagogical pollination, that was the other thing that I listed on here, sometimes it's very easy to get siloed in our own individual areas. We work with students, but we're not necessarily working with other experts in the field. This is a way to start seeing how someone else does something and you can share your expertise as well. So there are many paths to OER. There is no one size fits all. We're thinking about things like affordable and, and, and equity measures. We're thinking about flexibility and how you can customize things. We're also thinking about how you can share your expertise with the world and learn from each other. Instead of having to reinvent the wheel and do it all yourself, what about learning from each other and being able to take from each other in a lovely um, back and forth reciprocity? So a little bit about OER versus ZTC. So open educational resources, or OER, means there is no barrier to access of any kind. That means we can send a link, we can distribute it however we want. Often we can remix it because the license allows and it is free to use. So it is no barriers to access. ZTC is a zero textbook cost. And this means it does not cost the student anything. Technically a school could purchase a class set and we could do semester long checkouts in the library that would qualify as a ZTC. Long-term though, a ZTC is not as sustainable as an OER. ZTC, as soon as a new publication comes out would have to be repurchased. That's a new expense for the institution. 
Also, a ZTC could be something that is free to use, but it's not free to adapt. So you will often see a ZTC from certain publishers. I know Adobe Photoshop has a whole bunch in their educational exchange. They are wonderful resources and they are free to use, but they are not free to remix. So they are not an OER, they are a ZTC. So when we have branding, we always do ZTC because an OER is always a ZTC, but a ZTC is not always an, OTR, an OER. So a ZTC is gonna be that umbrella term, meaning there is no cost to the students. If you ask me which one institutions and people like myself are gonna prefer, we're gonna to default to open educational resources as there's no barriers of access of any kind. Now, when it comes to formatting, people often think OER is just online and this is not true. You can print at cost of printing and it's often a very low cost for printing. And so you can have an OER in multiple formats. You can have it embedded directly into your LMS system. So your students never even have to click out of your Canvas course. You can also have it in PDF formats as well as physical. So formats are another thing that really helps when you think about OER, you have ability to distribute the information in whatever way works best for you. So choosing the right approach, again, there is no one size fits all. Often we work with DOPS or EOPS and we work with different institutions to make sure that we are meeting the needs of all students. And that's one of the things that OER allows us to do in a quicker, more streamlined way. So people always say, Rachel, is there actually really research on this? Yes, so there's so much research on OER at this point. Students are always gonna prefer a cheaper option or a free option if they have that choice. Most students are working part-time jobs. They are really strapped for cash. So they're gonna choose that option, especially if there is printed options for those students who do want a printed version. They usually prefer digital methods as most of them are digital natives, but those who prefer traditional textbooks, we can still get that for them at a much lower cost. And again, all of this leads to equitable pathways. Now we have had people say, well, Rachel, how do we do ZTC pathways? All our faculty have academic freedom. Absolutely, we can ask if you would be interested in switching to OER, but we cannot require anything from any faculty. So when we talk about why we switch to OER, it really is for these reasons. And when it comes to being able to market a ZTC pathway, we could do cohorts. So once we have at least one faculty who is committed to doing ZTC for each class within a pathway, that pathway could run a cohort that is ZTC 100% from start to finish. So that's how that would work as far as the research goes. It is resounding. Students are always going to choose a cheaper option if they have that option. They need education, but they also need cost efficient options. So I want to come back to one more thing. You as the faculty are the subject experts. Only you know how your students need to learn this content. You have watched them learn. You have watched the struggles. I am an information scientist. I have a master's in information science, meaning I understand information retrieval, distribution, the way that you organize it, usability. And so when we collaborate, you get the expertise of someone who has instructional design, usability, and information science background, and you bring your subject expertise. And we work together to create something that works. So you don't have to learn everything that I know, and I don't know everything that you know. And so we get to work together. You get to innovate, you get to collaborate, and you also get to provide guidance for others in your field on how to best do this work. Thank you so much.